The complaint says that there were some people who violated their duties that they owed to this giving back fund company. Hello everybody, we are here today to do a little bit of a follow-up episode from the first episode of Through the Storm Thursdays. Now, if you have not seen that or heard of it, basically I've been reading Lynn Spears' 2008 book called Through the Storm, and basically I was just reading it for my own research purposes, but I thought it would be really fun to just read it all together. Well, in that book, and have my copy here that I bought from eBay.com for like $15 or something, um, Lynn Spears, in the introduction, thanks this guy named Mark Steverson. So what she says on page X, whatever that is, I think it's 10. Uh, one reason she says, one reason I've written this book is to honor Mark Steverson, an entertainment lawyer who strategically planned Britney's career. He worked with Larry Rudolph, her manager, but somehow Mark never got the proper credit for all he did to help Britney along. Mark was a wonderful, kind man who always encouraged me to do something with the poems and the journal entries I had written over the years, but every time we were going to pursue a publishing project together, something would happen with one of my kids and I got distracted. That fine man died in 2007 of cancer and he never got to see this dream of ours come true. So when I was reading this, I asked Jake, who is this person? Mark Steverson. I've never heard his name. I've never seen him mentioned. I've never read his name. And to my knowledge, I don't think, I don't think that Jake really knew either. So one of my Twitter friends, she sent me the case text of this lawsuit where Mark Steverson is actually being sued. So huh, a lot of things happen in this lawsuit. A lot of, a lot of things happen around the year 2002. And I didn't even realize it until I started looking into this, but I've spent the last like three or four days literally just researching and trying to figure out the best way to kind of present this information and tell this story. I am hoping to be able to set up like a situation where I can write on a blackboard or a whiteboard and y'all can see, but until then, like this is the best we're gonna be able to do. Okay, so what I'm gonna kind of do is go through this lawsuit probably not necessarily like line by line like usual but just kind of to get a gist of it then i want to go through one other document that i actually purchased from um pacer with my own money so let's go ahead and jump into this and i am excited to share some of this information with y'all because some of our familiar friends are mentioned here so the name of this lawsuit is the Giving Back Fund, Inc. versus Steverson. So what we're gonna be looking at is the memorandum of decision. And the decision is basically means everything in the lawsuit is over. Like this is the decision. So it's not gonna be like halfway through or anything like that. This was filed in the United States District Court in Massachusetts, which means this is a federal case, not a state case. And the date that this was published was July 12th, 2002. So what that is gonna tell you is all of the events that happened to give rise to this lawsuit would have happened much before 2002 or much before, you know, July 2002 anyway. So the judge here is uh, Raya Zobel. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. So according to the complaint, which is the initial document that is filed in a court proceeding, it's like you're telling the court everything that you're saying the other party did wrong. So in that complaint, which would have been filed by the Giving Back Fund, Steverson is the defendant, one of the defendants, and Giving Back Fund is what's called the plaintiff. The plaintiff is who sues in a cause of action. So according to the Giving Back Fund, Mark Steverson breached his fiduciary duty to plaintiff, who would be the Giving Back Fund, uh, while he was acting as a member of the board of directors. And the way that they say that he breached his duty is that he interfered, Steverson, he interfered with the Giving Back Fund's business relationship with two of its celebrity clients. Now, I had a hunch of who this might be when I started reading this, and I'll let y'all kind of try and figure it out, but we will get into who it is in just a bit. The complaint also charges a defendant, Corina Bigger, which is a former employee of the Giving Back Fund. The complaint charges her uh, with breaching her duties as well. And then the remaining defendants are, oh, okay, Rudolph Beer LLP, plaintiff's employer, and Larry Rudolph, plaintiff's superior with aiding and abetting Steverson's. Okay, so basically what does the complaint say? 
The complaint says that there were some people who violated their duties that they owed to this giving back fund company. And the people that are mentioned here, if you blink, you'll miss it. Lawrence H. Rudolph at Rudolph Beer LLP is actually Larry Rudolph, Britney Spears' former manager, who is largely given credit of like discovering her. He practiced law, a lot of people don't know this, but he's a lawyer and he actually was a practicing lawyer founding his firm Rudolph and Beer LLP in 1993 or 1992. He later, it wasn't until 10 years later, you know, 2002 that he, this year, this exact year that this was filed, um, that Larry quit being a practicing lawyer and started being Britney's manager full time. I don't know if this had anything to do with this case or anything like that, but we did see that that, you know, that his law firm is mentioned here. He's also mentioned and named personally Lawrence H. Rudolph. That's Larry Rudolph. He was He's listed here as plaintiff superior. So defendants, it's Larry and Mark Steverson and them, have moved to dismiss all counts on the grounds that there's no jurisdiction. And the defendants allege that the complaint doesn't actually state a claim that's actually even actionable. But I want to just stop right here and make sure we understand. Mark Steverson, the guy that Lynn Spears credits in her book, was working at Larry Rudolph's law firm as a lawyer in the year, at least in like 2001. We'll get into the exact years, but it's right around this time, right? At the time he's working there, he's serving on the board of directors of the Giving Back Fund. Now, you're probably asking who is the Giving Back Fund? We'll get into that. But just know for purposes of right now, it's a nonprofit organization that helps people set up charities, right? Or helps you to find charities to give money to. So we have Mark Steverson, who Lynn Spears credited in her book for being an inspiration. He's working at Larry Rudolph's law firm as a lawyer, and they apparently have these two celebrity clients. And he also is serving on the board of directors at the Giving Back Fund, and now he's getting sued. And not only is he getting sued, but also the law firm that Larry owns, and Larry is getting sued. Explosion. It's very interesting, though, that they do not sue Stephen Beer individually, only suing Rudolph individually. Okay, I think that's interesting, because the law firm's name is Rudolph and Beer. Okay. Okay. So then the court says both arguments lack merit, meaning this case is not getting dismissed. All right. Uh, along with the complaint, plaintiff, that's the giving back fund, submitted supplementary documentary evidence or supplementary documentation that establishes a case of personal jurisdiction. So now we're going to get all into this personal jurisdiction stuff. And I could teach a whole law class on that, but we really don't have to get into it right now. It's basically just laying out the technicality that the court can hear this case because Larry and Mark Stevenson are trying to argue, no, the court can't hear this case. And the, this court basically says, yes, I can. According to the complaint, that's that original document, Larry initiated contact with the Giving Back Fund in Massachusetts. Now, who else is based in Massachusetts? New Kids on the Block, Johnny Wright, National Financial Services, which is one of the companies that Britney's Money and the Conservatorship is in. Okay, so this Giving Back Fund is in Massachusetts and Larry initiated contact with them to establish a public charity to be administered by the Giving Back Fund on behalf of Britney Spears. And they're saying that that was Larry's client at the time. He then, Larry then traveled in the year 2000, August 2000, to Massachusetts to the first Giving Back Fund Britney Spears Foundation sponsored camp. And again, in August of 2001, he came again for another Britney Foundation event. Steverson, Mark Steverson, who's now dead, similarly contacted GBF on behalf of his client, Justin Timberlake. So it looks like Larry Rudolph was Britney's, you know, alleged person that contacted on behalf of Britney and then Steverson contacted on behalf of his client, Justin Timberlake. Now, remember what Lynn said in her book that Mark Steverson, what did she say exactly? Strategically planned Britney's career and worked with Larry Rudolph and never got the proper credit for all he did to help Britney along. Well, I wonder if that's not because they didn't disclose, you know, exactly. Maybe, maybe it was like, oh yeah, I'm Larry, I'm calling on behalf of Brittany. Oh, hi, I'm uh, Mark, I'm calling on behalf of Justin. But we know that Mark was helping Brittany because Lynn said it. Over a period of two years, Steverson communicated with the Giving Back Fund in Massachusetts offices personnel, both by telephone and email, several times a week on average. 
With respect to the day-to-day -day activities of the Spears and Timberlake Foundations at Giving Back Fund. The complaint further states that Steverson traveled to Boston on at least two occasions to transact business relating to GBF, GBF, at which time his actions resulted in harm to GBF. Steverson maintained a position on GBF's board of directors from March of 2000 until January 2001. Meanwhile, defendant Karina Bigar was an employee of the Giving Back Fund. She was at the Boston office and she subsequently moved to New York, during which time she breached, allegedly, her fiduciary duty to the Giving Back Fund. But what we're really gathering from this, what I really wanna show is that Mark Steverson was Britney Spears's, I don't know, sort of like manager of sorts. He strategically planned her career. Larry Rudolph was Mark Steverson's employer, right? And he worked with Larry Rudolph and then now they're getting sued together on this, uh, on this case and it has to do with their affiliation and their representation of Justin Timberlake and of Britney Spears. Now, importantly, Mark Steverson passed away in October of 2007. And I think also that same year, Britney sued Larry Rudolph for like labor violations and stuff. I don't know what ended up coming of that, but I wanted to talk a little more about what is going on with Mark Steverson. So I found some other information about this law firm. So let's go there next. So Mark Steverson, I start looking him up, but essentially what I ended up finding out was Mark Steverson didn't work always at Rudolph and Beer LLP. He worked before at, so Mark Steverson is listed in this 1992 publication called Broadcasting cable radio satellite and in this in this issue it says mark steverson from paramount pictures corporation legal affairs department joins mtm entertainment inc studio city california as an attorney but i also remember reading somewhere he got his law license in 1991 so it's like he wasn't actually a lawyer for that long before he was like working for paramount and then he leaves paramount and he goes to mtm entertainment as an attorney. Then the next year, 1993, he's promoted, not only as an attorney at MTM Enterprises, but also named Associate Director of Business and Legal Affairs. So I'm like, all right, well, that seems fine. Like as of, you know, the early 90s, he was working as a lawyer, he was becoming a lawyer or whatever. Then I go to just start Googling, right? And it comes to find out a lot of the different people who we're really familiar with were represented not only by Larry as a manager, but he actually represented them as a lawyer. So for example, there's this book called in music, something about music and entertainment, the prudent parents guide from start to stardom and Stephen C beer, who is the other named partner from Rudolph and beer LLP. He's the one who wrote this book. Now, he was doing a little bit of a, of a press tour of sorts to try and promote his book. And one of the things he did was allowed Larry Rudolph to write the foreword, so, uh, or the introduction. So I just wanna read a little bit about what Larry said. You know, our practice focused on entertainment law. Much of the time it was devoted to the legal protection and representation of emerging young artists. We didn't stop there. Steven and I, this is Larry talking, also took on the role of handling many other big picture management issues that arose for our rising star clients. And we realized that we were just the guides that these young entertainers needed. With the right management, career development, and counseling, we helped our clients achieve their show business dreams and grow into a worldwide phenomenon, such as Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Aaron Carter, and Lady Gaga. Now, interestingly, they don't mention Britney, but the next paragraph is about her. During our time at Rudolph and Beer, we met Britney Spears and her family when she was 13 years old. Steven and Larry had the unique experiences of representing her at the early point in her career and developed and guiding her to the point where she first signed with Jive Records in 1999 and released her debut album, Baby One More Time. We managed her throughout the early stages of her teenage career and watched her grow from a sweet Louisiana girl to an international superstar. Although I've left the practice of law to serve as her full-time manager I, and been a fireside for most of her career, Steven still practices law actively in New York City. Okay, so 
you get a little bit of a glint, glimpse into what Larry and Stephen want you, the public, to believe about Britney and the management and all of that. So he said, you know, at Rudolph and Beer, we met Britney Spears and we, when she was 13, and Stephen and I had a unique experience of representing her at this early point in her career. Okay, that's all fine and good. But in 2008, Lynn Spears said that y'all never gave, uh, what's his name, Mark Steverson his appropriate credit for what he did. So was he, was he working there and... Is he being left out by Larry now in 2015? If so, why? Uh, why would Lynn lie if that's the case? You know, stuff like that. In 1990, like two or three, Larry Rudolph and Stephen Beer opened this law firm. At some point after 1993, Mark, what's his name, Steverson, shows up uh, to the law firm. Now shows up meaning like he's now working with them at the law firm. We know this because of that lawsuit we just found. 90, so, so 91, Steverson starts practicing law. 92, he's working for Paramount. 93, he's working for MTM. But at some point, he starts working for Larry Rudolph's firm, Rudolph and Beer. But Rudolph and Beer, Larry left in 2003 to become, or 2002 or three, to become Britney's full-time manager and he no longer was gonna practice law. When he left, Stephen Beer did not keep the law firm going. He left the firm. Rudolph and Beer closed law firm. Beer to head film practice at Greenberg Traurig. Stephen Beer, he started a law firm with Larry Rudolph. Larry Rudolph leaves the law firm in 2002 to manage Britney Spears. And instead of keeping the law firm open, he closes the law firm and he goes to work at this firm that now Britney's current lawyer works at. The article says they're closing their doors next week as Stephen Beer and Larry Rudolph head in different directions in the entertainment business. Beer is joining the film practice at Greenberg Charg's law firm in New York while Rudolph is launching an artist management company called Rain Deer Entertainment. So before we move on, I wanna just break this part down. It seems to me based on other research that Mark Steverson, who would have been still alive at this point, was more in the publishing aspect and I don't mean music publishing I mean like print publishing he he seems to have like helped people publish books and that's what Lynn seems to be crediting him with then we have Larry Rudolph who I think was more music focused and then we have uh Beer Stephen Beer who I think was probably more film focused right now it is important to note that the firm kind of put together and helped the movie Crossroads which aired in 2002 now I do, I do want y'all to know that me and Jake and maybe like Deep Dive are gonna be working on a series that's gonna really go through this early timeline. So if it's like all this stuff is just like spinning around in your head, just like, don't worry about it. We're gonna cover all that. So then this guy, what's his name? Uh, Steven Beer goes on to say, oh, he feels like he's playing for the Yankees. It's a major league firm, which it is. He'll be heading a large firm practice with offices in a film, sorry, a large film practice with offices in a number of cities, um, including LA. He decided to join the firm after Rudolph's decision to abandon his legal practice and exclusively pursue management. Beer will join entertainment attorneys Joel Katz, Jay Cooper, and Andrew Tavel at Greenberg Traurig. Now, we have a problem with Mr. Joel Katz because Joel just started a new law firm and just literally this year or last year he was accused of this type of behavior right here bolded and he left the firm so so essentially the reason i wanted to show you all this is to say look back in 2002 what's his name stephen beer left working with larry rudolph to go work uh with this guy joel katz and joel katz has been at greenberg since then all the way through until the end of last year so it's pretty certain that Matthew Rosengart knows who this Stephen Beer guy is and definitely they both work under this Joel Katz guy. Now, am I making some kind of um, allegation against Matthew Rosengart? No, because Joel Katz, he could have hated him. They could have bad blood. They might not have got along. He might have been a whistleblower. We don't know. We have no idea. But I did want to just show y'all, you know, the same repeat law firms just keep showing up again and again. Loeb and Loeb is another one. And it's not even really the law firms all the time. Sometimes it's just the lawyers like Vivian, Gerald and Geraldine have been on Britney's case in many different law firms, right? So through Greenberg's offices in Europe, Beer indicated he plans to leverage financing opportunities for his clients. He indicated that he was emerging, right? His existing film practice with Greenberg's. Okay, so these two people, are gonna join Beer at the new firm. Um, and look, we don't have what's his name mentioned here. So I have reason to believe 
that, um, what is it, Matt Stever, Mark, Mark Steverson left from practicing with them at some time after the whole thing went down with the giving back fund. Because look, he doesn't actually bring, Beer does not bring Mark Steverson over with him uh, to the new practice at Greenberg. He brings Maria and Ted. As an industry and community, we're at a crossroads, which I think is interesting that he's using the, road, the word crossroads because that's the movie. Yeah, so in 93, Rudolph and Beer partners included Beer, Rudolph, Emerson, Bruns, and George Gilbert, and it's practice focused, especially on independent film and pop music. See, they don't mention the Steverson guy here either, but Lynn Spears did mention him. They, these are their different clients. We have, you know, Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, and O-Town. I know all, all so Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, and O-Town were all Lou Pearlman uh, clients. But Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, and O-Town were all managed by Lou Pearlman. And I don't know who 98 Degrees was managed by. Britney Spears would have been brought in through Backstreet Boys, through NSYNC, probably through the Justin... Timberlake or the Mickey Mouse Club connection somehow, some way. Although I take great pride. So Larry says, you know, he's found his true passion and that's artist management. Then we have the stuff that, what's his name is? Okay, so prior to launching Rudolph and Beer, Beer worked at Frankfurt, Kernet, Klein and Seltz. Then he worked at Rudolph and Beer. Then he left, of course, to work at Greenberg Traurig. And then he left there to work at this other firm that we read earlier. So essentially, those are like the main big points I wanted to just cover there is that Mark Steverson worked at Larry Rudolph's law firm. He was sued for basically stealing clients away from the giving back fund and harming them financially. And the giving back fund says that that costed them like lots of millions of dollars and stuff like that. The giving back fund would have been related to that first Britney Spears Foundation music camp in Massachusetts as well. What I find interesting is that Larry Rudolph almost never doesn't seem to ever mention uh, Mark Steverson, but then you have Lynn Spears kind of going out of her way to say, I don't know why Mark never got the credit he deserved because uh, he worked just as hard as Larry and the rest of them and all that, but you know, he never got his credit. But yeah, eventually, essentially like the, the main big things, let's see if I can get my little, I really need to get a board that you can see like me writing on because otherwise it's just pointless. So we have 2000, so we have the big main years here, 92, 2002, and 2003. Now there's also other important things happening during this time that me and Jake are definitely going to get into like the Mickey Mouse Club revamp type of thing situations going on. Lou Pearlman is starting up the Backstreet Boy. You know, Brittany is going to this school in New York that one of these people kind of like recommended she go to. And so... A lot of stuff is happening and everything like that, but I did just want to give a, a sort of small, slight deep dive into kind of who is Mark Steverson and what are some of the questions that I have walking away from some of this research? Like one of the questions I have walking away is why doesn't Larry ever mention him? It's always like, oh, me and Steven, me and Steven. But Lynn Spears specifically said like this guy, Mark Steverson, strategically planned Britney's career. And it makes me wonder who else was Mark Steverson's client that maybe he's not getting credit for. It's interesting that, you know, it was 2002 is the same year that Lou Pearlman is getting sued by the Backstreet Boys and stuff. Um, that all of a sudden, you know, Larry Rudolph leaves being a lawyer. Like, are they related somehow? Who knows? I don't know. But these and other questions will be explored in our upcoming series titled To, to Be Announced. Because we don't know yet. But I did want to just follow up with y'all and let you know, like, this is what's going on with Mark Steverson. Yet again, it's another kind of thing folding back on itself where you have, you know, all these same players in the industry and the law firms and this and that all kind of overlapping on each other to the extent that we have lawyers actually quitting being lawyers so they can manage people as music industry people. So if you enjoyed this and or random ramblings into anything I decide to make a video about next on the That Surprise Witness Variety Show, please do subscribe and turn on your notifications. Um, I don't know. Just stick around and see what happens next. Who knows what adventures we'll get into next. Oh, facts ain't defamation. Okay, bye. Thank <laughs> you.